Welcome back to Block Show Singapore 2019. We are here in Singapore, knocking down a lot of myths, going after a lot of the crazy traction that's happened over the past two years as companies fall out and real companies start hitting the, the, the rubber to the daggone ground. And we're following them. But this is a man that is heavy, heavy into AI, heavy machine learning. This man has so much knowledge under that dome right now, we don't have enough time to talk about it. But I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Ben. Can you please say hello to the DLive world and tell them who you are and what's the most important thing they should know about you? Hey, this is uh, Ben Goetzel. I'm here in Singapore at Block Show and I've been talking about the latest and greatest from the Singularity Net project, which is an AI meets blockchain project that I, that I launched two years ago. And you know, we're now entering a whole new phase. Yes, so yes. I mean, as, as we were discussing earlier, I mean, this is sort of a time when we're transitioning mm -hmm. like a lot of other projects from the vision and then the building of the software mm -hmm. now to a new phase which is getting adoption for the oh, software the and this application is a, if, the if rubber it, hitting the road yeah <laughs> so we i mean we spent you know the end of 2017 building the alpha version of singularity net and just sharing the vision right last couple of years we've been building an actual decentralized ai platform putting a bunch of cool ai in it working with a few early adopter companies right so now you know, the software is out there, it's, it's ready to go, it works, okay. it was not easy to build, but now comes the even harder part is... Adoption. I mean, yeah, I mean, if, if we want the decentralized AI ecosystem to be a major player up there, you know, al al along with uh, Amazon, Microsoft, mm -hmm. and uh, Google, and the Tencent, Baidu, so forth, Alibaba, uh. you know, we, we need to get as many users as these guys have, right? So what's the plan? What's the plan for adoption right now? We're out here, we're talking. How can the audience take part and see what sectors should be flying to you right now and utilizing and leveraging the technology? So this is a, it's a marketplace, singular unit, right? Mm -hmm. So we need two sides. We need supply and we need demand. Okay. And we've, we've seeded the supply a bit by putting some of our AI in there now. So we have AI in Singularity Net now that will, it'll analyze voice, say it'll identify who's speaking from voice, it'll automatically write like a, a news article for you from a prompt and so we, we have AI there for biology that will analyze DNA data so if a, a scientist analyzes DNA data in the lab they can upload it, the AI will, will tell them sort of what, what's important in that data and what isn't. But the, well, How specific, how accurate is that Data. Well, it depends on the experiment. Okay. I mean, so we've been we've been using it to analyze DNA from people age 105 years or over to try to understand what, what's so special, what makes them live so long. And there, there's a lot of every university is using this. Tell me that right now. We got a few. Okay. We got a few. They every single university so should be should all be. over this. And so where this is the challenge is you make something good, you put it out there, you get a few people to use it, then you got to kindle that fire and cause it to spread. But the other thing is. It can't be just us, right? right? We have to get all sorts of other AI developers to put AI tools in the platform. And there's this familiar you know, chicken egg problem. The more AI in the platform, the more users there will be. The more users there will be, the more AI there will be. So we've, we've done a couple things to sort of get the demand side going. So we're working with Cisco, who is using the platform okay. to analyze car traffic data. And we're working with PICC, which is China's largest insurance company, mm -hmm. to use some of the AI in the platform. And this is just, you get some big companies using it that right. is building some, some demand, right? Okay. Yeah. Then we, we've also just launched a, a PayPal interface to the platform, which is, a, we thought about this a bit, right? Okay, because walk me through this PayPal interface. How is this gonna help? How, how would this help folks? Well, basically, if you have an AI company, mm -hmm. Or rather, if you have a company that needs AI for something, so say, say, say you have a website and you want to use AI to optimize which ads to show which people, or say... That's a great, that's a great use case. Yeah, yeah, as, as, as one example. Now, you may have AI on our platform that will do that for you, right? Mm. But if you have to pay for that AI with our AGI token, I mean, that makes sense to us in the crypto world. Right, right. But most e-commerce websites and the people who run them, they can't figure that they don't out. have a crypto wallet, right? And 
So what we do is we make a way for them to just pay with their credit card uh -huh. from their bank account. On the back end, their fiat currency is converted into AGI token on the back end of the PayPal interface. Now, they're paying a bit of a fee for this, okay. right? I mean, PayPal charges everyone a fee. Why? So in the end, if someone wants to get the most bang for their buck, they should use our token, our token directly. Look what you're getting. But many companies just don't don't want to do that, right? Because they're, I mean, that they're they're not in the crypto world and they're afraid of. It. So basically, we're looking at the PayPal interface. It's like the gateway drug, right? Absolutely, it, it, yeah, is. Yeah. it is. I mean, you, you want to make it really, really easy for a user to jump on and use the services in, in the and platform. And come back. Now, once they're doing it and they're realizing, well, this AI. You know, it's lower cost, it's higher quality than I was getting on Microsoft Azure or, or mm -hmm. whatever. Then after a while, they're going to look and say, well, actually, we could get the same exact service without paying this overhead fee, uh, but it's going directly to the token. Okay. But by, by that point, they're already hooked on the AI and, mm -hmm. and, and the quality it provides. So, it, are, do you have a, a, a plethora of videos that are showing how, demonstrating exactly how the AI is, is being used and how it can benefit all of these different companies at, right now? We haven't done that much in terms okay. of uh, marketing videos, actually, okay. but you can, I mean, you can go directly to beta.singularitynet.io and you, okay. can, you can actually see the software in action and there, there's, you can wow. get live demos of the actual software. Okay. You know? Beta.singularity .io. .io. Singularity .io. Woo, that was a long yeah. one. We need AI to make that shorter. <laughs> so we have to find that one to make it shorter. So what are some of the biggest challenges that you've come up against as you've built this out over the past two years? Besides, the, besides what we know now is, is getting the adoption. Right? There's been a lot of challenges. I mean, on the technical side, we built this on top of the Ethereum blockchain. Okay. And Ethereum, as everyone knows by now, doesn't really scale up the way one would like, and there's drop <laughs> transactions. And uh -huh, stuff. So, uh -huh. so making a platform that actually works on top of an infrastructure that sometimes only semi works. I mean, that that required a lot of tricky oh, software software engineering, right? So and, you found a thousand bugs inside there, and then we had the conversation a little off camera where we were discussing when you jump into this world with a solution and the blockchain world, you start to realize that you need to build other cogs to connect the scenario. Yeah, so we're, really, we're still going through that. So we're, uh, we're talking about now how do you make Singularity Net multi-chain rather than only relying on Ethereum. Exactly. We've been working with uh, Tufi Saliba and other guys from yeah. Toda Network. Yeah. So lo lo looking at how to, how to put Toda underneath some Singularity Net okay. nodes because in our tests, Right now, this is way more scalable than yeah. Ethereum. On the other hand, we never wanted the Singularity Net to rely totally on any one underlying blockchain layer because you never right. know what's going right. to what's going to become the next best amazing thing. And then right. someone's going to pivot, and then it's going to shout. Yeah, yeah. Down. I right, mean, right, right now, Toda seems seems very cool. Okay. But we don't want to we don't want to glue ourselves onto onto anything because you. You, you, you got to be able to do what's ever best and mix and match different things. I'd say, of course, another another issue being in this space, which, to be honest, hasn't affected me so much, but it, I see this as an issue with, you know, some of my colleagues and others, is just the sheer distraction of all the noise and, oh, and chaos in the blockchain world. You right? have I to mean, focus on the signal. So to focus on building the product mm -hmm. and getting use for the product, you know, that's, it's not hard for me because I've been doing AI 30 years and to me this is just, this is a way to make AI that, that's decentralized. I okay. mean, the blockchain isn't the main point. It's important, just like the internet or something is important, right? right it's right. part of the underlayer, but the point of the blockchain is to support the AI part of the stack mm -hmm. in a way that lets it be decentralized and democratically governed. But I'd say for, for a number of the younger people who, who I've been working with, I mean, it's just, it's hard not to get distracted by the token prices going up and uh, down. You, got, you can't look at that. People, no, people no, own no, some no. tokens. They're like, you know, why, why did the token price go up? Why did it go down? I'm mm -hmm. like, well, you look, if you, if you raise venture funding for a startup, you may spend a couple of years building the product, right. And, right. and then you launch the product. Right, so right, right. right now, we're doing something very complex 
this is still early stage. Mm -hmm. And what you see with the token price on this or that exchange, like it it's neither matter. here nor there. It's right. nothing to do with the fundamental progress of the, of, of the project. And oh. I think, uh, you know, we, we have an industry organization that I started with that with Tufi Saliba and Simone Giacomelli mm -hmm. called DIA, Decentralized AI Alliance. And we have like 60 plus different AI meets blockchain projects okay. that are all D -I -A. D -A -I -A, D Decentralized AI Alliance. Okay. Uh, so, and we're DIA dot foundation. So Thank you. It's got to be long URLs, <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. So, but I, I think one of the things we do in this industry organization, I mean, it's partly software interoperations, so we can use our tech to interoperate with some other blockchain project software tech, but it, it's also, you know, everyone doing decentralized AI, we need to come together and just focus on building the thing. Because as you said, we need a whole parallel ecosystem, right? And you truly do. And there's a lot of different pieces, and it's not all going to be the same project. Like o Ocean Protocol mm -hmm. is building a decentralized, scalable, big data management platform. And that's so just it. Shivam is, is working on bioinformatics, like AI for genomic and clinical medicine data. Mm -hmm. Again, tokenized, decentralized on, on the blockchain with secure multi-party computing. So you, but you need, uh, Toda is, is doing their thing for efficient, scalable, Jeez. secure messaging. And so you, you gotta, gotta, play, you gotta play with things. all of these guys. You have to play and, nicely with and them. And they all gotta connect together, both on the human level, exactly. and then most importantly, on, on, on the software level. And you know, if you're a Google or an Amazon, mm -hmm. You can just buy every every company you want to work with and connect everything. And they connect them, and that's the end of it. Connect it in your proprietary stack. Right. We're trying not to do things. A, no one in this space has the money to buy all the competitors. B, that's not how we want to work anyway. We right. want things to be open, collaborative, and decentralized. Right. Yeah, and you, you want to. You want a decentralized network of decentralized right. networks, right? And, I mean, that, I mean that's but we have to stay with the ethos, right? We have well, to. We have the, to. The right? internet is a decentralized network of decentralized networks. networks. That's the inter in the internet, right? But it so, doesn't work for everyone in that respect, or well, how it should. It, wor it works better than most things in the planet, right? So, Hello. And it cuts through <laughs> politics in an interesting way. I mean, Iran is still on the internet that, yeah. in, sp in spite of all these politics that's issues, true. right? That's true. So, that, I mean, there's a big power to having a decentralized network without a central owner. Right. And if AI can be rolled out that way, all of us on the planet are gonna be a lot better off. But yeah, there's a challenge. You're sort of, you're trying to build a whole parallel ecosystem. And I mean, people look at the amount of money that went into ICOs, but look, Microsoft, trillion dollar company, Amazon, right. trillion dollar company, right. Google, I mean, the amount these guys are spending. And this is just one sector. The amount Chinese government is pumping into Tencent and Alibaba directly and indirectly. I mean, actually, the whole decentralized sector, mm -hmm. let alone the decentralized AI sector, like that's, that's a, a drop in the bucket compared yeah. to what's being spent in the centralized world. So if we can build something that competes, mm -hmm. you know, using this relatively scant amount of resources, mm -hmm. I mean, that's going to be a miracle. But I think we can pull off that miracle. But it's for the same reason, ultimately, that open source managed to make Linux, which is now, by many measures, the dominant OS on the planet, Absolutely. beating those from, from Microsoft, Apple, and, mm -hmm. and other big companies. I mean, it's because of the power of communities of people that, exactly. that, that come together to, exactly. to, build, to build amazing things. And that, that's been the fun part of the blockchain world. Like that, there's this focus on price speculation, which is at times insane and annoying. We won't even, let's, back to the, what you're saying, the more fun but part the of community, the situation. But the community coming together that's to build things. I mean, this is a, there's a real community spirit of collaborating on, on creating amazing transformative new things. And that, right. that, that's a lot of the fun of it. D Live, you've heard it from the man himself. If we're not collaborating, it doesn't matter if it's AI, machine, learn, doesn't matter what it is. If we're not collaborating, we're not going to get anywhere. And we're in a hemisphere, we're in the ecosphere, we're in this entire system right now where folks are collaborating, collaborating like none other. And I have to thank you once again for stopping by the Block Show. And uh, I look forward to seeing what's going to happen next year with you because you always have exciting things to talk yeah, it's about. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. All right, All right. man. Thank you so All much. Right. I appreciate man. you. Yeah. All right.